Use my affiliate link to support the channel down in the description. Hey, what's up guys? We're with uh, that salty fry, my friend Mark, and also the channel mod. And uh, what did you do this weekend at YCS uh, Raleigh? I went to my first YCS ever and I made top 64 with Baronless Manadium. Yes, yes. This was um, definitely, uh, it, it, it was a cutoff for top uh, 32, unfortunately, but like you still got 64th place with Manadium. I believe you were the best performing Manadium player there. It's one of those decks that a lot of people thought got cratered post ban list with Baron and uh, Savage Ban, but you made it work. And uh, so, uh, do you have any shouts before we get into the deck profile and then uh, like matchups? Absolutely. Shout outs first and foremost to <coughs> the man, the myth, Mr. Metagames GX, who uh, was the reason I was able to even consider going to Raleigh. Um, I was able to organize all the other mods and bros to come along. Shout out Smams, Wheels, Justin, Mr. Sunlight Wolf. Shout out Yuri Diaz. Shout out Yuri. Back in his home state. Uh, it was a great time. Shout out to my dad for getting me into the game 20 plus years ago. And my son, Remus. I got this far because of you, buddy. I told you I'd shout you out if I got a deck profile. So this one's for you, buddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so let's uh, see the deck. How many main deck cards? Main deck cards were around 42. All right. Struggled to get it down to 40, but I feel confident with what we did with there. Let's see. Start off with the traditional. Three Ram Heart. Two right Heart. And then... Three of the Meek. Uh, this deck is definitely under construction. There's a couple things I would have changed, but if I could, I would have probably won three right cart instead. It's a little bricky sometimes, but the consistency of being able to play through hand traps when you open both these guys is just unparalleled. Um, three Meek is obvious. You don't really want to change that. Afterwards, we have the Visas Monsters. I run only two Visa Starfrost, and I run three Samsara. Samsara came up a lot more than I thought it would. Normally, when you open it and you don't have too much engine, it's not that great because you can only go into Scareclaw engine. Um, but I really like the fact because in this version of Manadium, you're making Amritara way more consistently, even if you can't make a full board. So being able to recycle Amritara, recycle your banished visas is, is so much more important than it was last format. So running three felt very necessary in my opinion. And then we get to Ye Old Spice. We had to run the Revolution Synchrons. That was the new tech that we ran. Um, so what was this for? Uh, this was the sad, sad conclusion that all Manadian players came to, uh, to get under Nib in the under five summons for the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Um, you run it with, this is the only spells I'll show for now, two tuning. Um, the tuning was great because sometimes you could mill a Visus or a 1521 into your graveyard um, and that would just help facilitate your Astrolog plays and potential extension, as well as Rev Synchron's effect to mill one to the graveyard. Uh, it was really good because even if you didn't end up using Rev Synchron's effect to get into Crystal Wing, you could pop it with uh, Starfrost and it would just be, you know, it's no same type, no same attribute, so it's a good target for that if you want to keep your other monsters on the field. So. I hated it the first two rounds, I won't lie to you. Um, it did not feel good, it felt very clunky. Um, but that's just from not being able to test as much as I like, but it ended up going a lot harder as the rounds went on. I was able to really kind of like find the groove of where they work and what the best lines were, and being able to play around hand traps, it just comes from experience and playing with the deck. So I, I like it, I think I would possibly take out a tuning or a rev synchron and not run five of the engine and just four and that feels a little more streamlined. Sounds good. <clears throat> Next we run some hand traps. I only run two Nibiru, two Ash, and other hand traps I do run three impermanence. Uh, only seven, but maybe it's just variants, but I found at least one of these quite a bit. They felt like the most impactful at the time. Um, Ash and Infinite go great for going first, and even if all hell breaks loose when you're going first and your opponent breaks your board somehow, which in all my rounds when I played made full board, no one ever broke my board, not once. Oh well. Nibiru goes hard. Um, so many Fire King Snake Eye players played into Nibiru. They got a little too greedy with the Snake Eye Flamberge, and they played right into it. They just comboed off, brought back their level ones, and then I was able to just tribute it off and they ended on this half-assed, mediocre board. And it, it felt, oh, it felt so good. I would run free if I could, but sadly I traded my other OTS salty. Rest in peace. 
Anyways, we go to spells. We got three Kalarium, one Obsidian, one Imaginings. One Obsidian? One Obsidian. I do not regret running only one Obsidian because this, oh man, how do you describe it? Two Obsidian, maybe it's variance, but two Obsidian felt clunky because you really only want to see this if you search it. Yeah. I don't want to have to open this. It's not the worst thing in the world, but there's so many other cards that I want to open. The decision is the one I want to search with Reimpart, get it, pop, and not have it in my hand. Take that as you will, but one felt great for me. And even when I did open it, I wasn't like super mad about it, but one felt totally fine. And Imaginings is the absolute goat for being able to hand sculpt if I open a Rev Synchron and a Tuning, then I can just activate, draw two, put the other one on the bottom of the deck, and then, you know, I'll draw a nib or an impermanence or something <coughs> else that's gas that I can play through. Imaginings awesome. is totally necessary. Also run... How many drolls did you see today? Drolls, or... I got drolled once. Okay. Once. People didn't want to play droll. It was weird. Very weird. I even asked people after the match. I was like, do you play droll? And they're like, no. I was like... Thank you. And you didn't get nibbed at all either, right? I got nibbed once by a voiceless voice player in round 11. And that hurt, but I was able to play through it, and then I'm on board that he couldn't break. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Pearl of Rhino. I run Pearl of Rhino for the fact that we go into Ancient Fairy Dragon, um, and if you got to activate it, you can pop it with Ancient Fairy Dragon, gain a thousand. That did come in clutch one time, um, as far as time goes. And then just search another one and continue from there. Still playing under Nib, while you can search. Two Reich Phobia, and as far as other Scareclaw goes, we do run a two Arrival. Um, <clears throat> two Arrival definitely run. Don't run one. That makes zero sense. Um, it's not it, once per turn. No, it's absolutely not once per turn. And if you draw the one, what are you going to search with Rykar? You know, it's just a bozo move. So definitely play two. You like the Pearl of Rhino, though, overall? Pearl of Rhino, I was very iffy on um, at the start of it. I didn't know if I wanted to go with it because I was like, I'm only searching visas. But when you're running AFD, it adds so much more utility and it just adds another layer of extension onto it. So Pearl of Rhino just, it really did feel good. I don't think I'd take it out. Um, other cards, defensive, we run two triple tactics, talents. We run two forbidden droplets. Shout out Yuri Diaz for hooking me up with the gentleman who had the Euro print copies. These are absolutely gorgeous. Um, Droplet was another goat of the deck. This card single handedly won me my round 11 <coughs> against the full voiceless voice board. Um, I was able to activate, send my Reich Phobia, send Reich Heart, search my actual you know extensions and everything while negating all of his, his negates and his non targeting. And it was just fantastic. If nice. I could, I think I might go to three. Um, but running two did feel pretty good. After that, three more cards. One for searching. One for Droll and Ash and Shifter. And Omni Negate, because the Omni Negate is just too hot. This stops Dark Ruler no more. This stops Veilers on, you know, it stopped everything. And the Cold Buy. Thank God I drew a game one and three playing against the flu player. He went draw phase shifter. I add call by each time. Very good. God was looking over me. <clears throat> so there's the main deck that is 42. Any changes you'd make offhand with the main deck? Oh, yes. There's a couple. I would switch out probably a Rev Synchron and maybe run like three droplet. Um, like there's, there's a couple different things I would do. It's definitely not a perfect list. I didn't have enough time to play test it, in my opinion. So if I had more time, I really could have like theory crafted and figured out the more streamlined version. The extra deck is what really needs help, because um, there's no Crimson Dragon in it, which is a huge issue, and that needs to be changed. But I'll get into that here. Sure. A um, lot of synchros. We run the Chris <coughs> Potter, the Chen Ying. The Gamiri Green, Crystal Wing Single Dragon, XL, Amritara, Trisukta, and the AFD. So, absolutely necessary, goes in tandem with this boy right here. This is also great for getting out your generic boy. Chen Ying was the old standby. It was great value, Barone. Um, kind of took her place. 
Obviously, it's not as good, but people underestimate how many cards get banished in a duel. And he's got destruction protection. He's got banished from the graveyard, from the field. He's absolutely fantastic. Gamiray Green came in clutch against Protoss. I had a tier player try to call out water for some reason. God bless him. And I chained Gamiray Green. My monsters were protected. His Protoss was banished. Fantastic card. Fantastic, fantastic. Don't take them out. Absolutely necessary for if you get brick hands. Good for extension. AFD, don't really need to say anything. It's great for popping. Great for special summoning. Don't forget the second effect to special summon level 4 from your hand if you need to. Um, it's a very underutilized effect that people don't know. Very strong in your deck. Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Cause Sometimes you just wish you had another normal. It, that's 100% correct. The normal summon is so <laughs> important, and if you don't have the ability to play past, and if they Veiler it or Imperm, then sometimes you choke. So it's very effective there. And obviously the new Baron, our Omni Negate, not once while it's face up on the field, it's just once per turn, and that actually saved my ass one time. The dude was like, is that once while it's face up on the field? And I was like, no. <laughs> no, no We're past those times, sir. Yeah, no, he's like, mm. okay, yeah, let's go game two. <laughs> Fair enough, so let's. Were you able to play under Baron or Nib Nibiru a lot? I like was... more than you, or as much as you'd like to, or maybe not as much? Uh, as opposed to if I had Baron, no. Uh, it's definitely harder to play under Nib. Um, just because you need to see, when testing, you need to see like a consistent two or three card combo. Like normally two card combo and the one will search another one. So it's three card combo and it is difficult to get it. But it is entirely hinged upon drawing a tuning or a rep sync, which is if you don't see it, you don't see it. And you just got to accept the fact when you don't see it that, okay, if they got it, they got it. I got to push anyways and I just got to hope that they don't have the nib because there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to make your board, hope for the best. And that's Yu Gi Oh! Sometimes you just can't play the out. Sounds good. Fusions, we run only two Astroloud. This is one thing that I would change. I would run three Astroloud because, dude, the number of times that I was able to recycle was very minimal. Um, Disc Potter's effects to negate did not really come up that much, so I wasn't really able to recycle my Astrolouds. So normally you're going through at least one or two of these guys in your turn one. So not having one in follow-up for OTK was really painful. Yeah. Um, I would definitely swap something out. I don't know what I would swap out. Maybe at a level 10, but I definitely want to run three. I want to find a way to run three. Okay. Sure. And then the traditional five. Two light heart, one cross, one SP, one Apple. Apple came in clutch. She's my girl. Love her to death. Um, would not take this out. Um, some people were suggesting in the Manadium group, swap it out for access code going second. I disagree. I feel like you have enough gas with your Synchro 10s and your Fusions. Um, and that Apple is necessary, you know, if you break their board, use your Synchro 10s and your Fusions, go into an Apple once you break their board, and then they just can't have any follow-up because it's gonna get negated and they won't be able to set up a board. So that's what I would say for the access code debate. Uh, we'll I told everyone going here, I was like, we're just going to be completely experimental. We're going to see what sticks and what doesn't. So don't hate me for this side deck. Uh, I ran three Vados. Did uh, you like this? Vados was clutch sometimes and not clutch other times. I will say that it's, it's one of those cards that you definitely can use it when you side it in because you know you're going to be playing against a deck that's using a field spell. So when you draw it, you're always using it. However, it doesn't really generate the value that you expect it to. I used it once against a Fire King uh, Snake Eye deck where he sent his Sanctuary to the graveyard with a Snake Eye Ash, and so his Fire King Island was fair game. So I was able to send it right away, pop, clear his board, and that was one of the best feelings in the world. But other than that, I would take it out. I don't think it's really that great, this format. Um, not enough to like take up three of your side deck slots. It's just not worth it. There's so much more real estate that you can- Maybe with more. Tenpai and uh, Gimmick Puppets in the future. Tenpai, exactly. Like for decks that are completely hinging on the field spell, absolutely I'm gonna be siding them in. Like believe, post, like once Legacy Destruction is legal, I'm absolutely gonna put it back in. And I'm gonna test and see how it does. But for now, I wanna take it out, see how some other stuff does. 
Uh, branded is a very real and imminent threat. Hi, I'm the branded player. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted to stay a little bit uh, strapped for that. Hi, I'm the danger. So, <laughs> so we run one ball drake, one mag, one Druis worm. Debated running two Druis worm, um, but we just ended on the three here. Uh, it came up pretty clutch, uh, mainly against Hurley. I didn't end up playing a single branded deck, sadly. It was mostly Fire King Snake Eye, shocker. But this card was absolutely clutch against the Pearly deck. Um, did you like? Did you did you like it against Fire? 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 Oh uh, yeah, Link Karibo doesn't exist, so all that's really left is the IP. And most Fire King Snake Eye decks, I found they're ending on IP on the field. yeah. They don't put in the graveyard. The, yeah, they're, they're keen to the what people are trying to do now. So they just. They just leave it on the field. The seals are bad now. Pisses me off, unless, unless man. it's for unless it's for Brandon yeah. or Voiceless. I mean, it's nice because even if, it's good against Voiceless too. It's very good against Voiceless. Even if they don't have any light or darks in your graveyard, you still run you know your light heart, your other light and darks that you don't need that are fifteen twenty ones. So you can still use it for your own stuff, but I would definitely keep them in. Keep them at three. I ran two corridor, one Colossus. This was useless, and I mean that I didn't I didn't use this once. I sighted it in so many times I didn't see it once. So maybe it's just because I didn't see it, but it's unsearchable, so it's a little tough. Maybe even the future run the uh, Nemesis pack or the Nemesis rank yeah, four if you I, want to do something like that. I thought maybe you know run two, and that way you can just not have to worry about getting ashed, but. Yeah, no, I, I only used it, I summoned it once, actually, against the tier player to go for OTK, because I needed a big body, but that was it. Yeah. Um, to be determined if it's going to be good in the future. Otherwise, we run two draw and Lockbird, and then for spells, for back row hate, we run the two Cosmic, the one Harpies, and the one Lightning Storm. No thrust, uh, again, it was all experimental. If I took out the Vados, it probably would have been thrust and like a Dark Ruler or something. Um, but the Droll was great. Droll was fantastic, actually. Oh, man, that killed Snake Eye Cash. Uh, the freaking the voiceless player, the first voiceless player I played against, the flu player I played against, they were all hurting from it. Um, so definitely, Droll is alive and well. He exists in this world, and he hurts. Yes, sir. Do um, you want to talk about your matchups uh, for, uh, for a minute? Yes. First matchup we went up against... Uh, Snake Eye Cash, which is an extremely underrated deck. I feel like people aren't giving it enough credit. Like, it's real at Snake Eye, so you gotta respect it, but the Cash monsters being as big as they are is just such an imposing threat. Like, my deck couldn't get over it. I was drawing bad hands, but also it's just so good. The resource game on it is incredible. So, got too old by that. Out of that, we went against Raid Raptor. Uh, Raid Raptor, too old. Um, no offense to the guy, it was light work. Um, sorry. Uh, he made his towers, but we ran it over with Astroloud because... Oh yeah, you can I, do I that. I have a 4250 Astroloud, I'm sorry, you're not, you're not going to stop me. Um, after that we played against, what was, what was number three? I think it was a Snake Eye, yeah, it was Snake Eye Fire King. Uh, two of the Snake Eye Fire King. The Snake Eye Fire King, which I found to be my worst matchup, ended up being my best matchup. Um, because Promethea targets, and so it's just like when they try to Veiler or Ash you, you can just play around it with, you know, your Droplet, you can play around it with your Rheum Heart popping your right heart, and it just, I don't know, it just seemed to flow. It seemed very free. Um, so that one was 2-1. Out of that we went Curly, Curly 2 0 me. They made their towers both times. I opened a terrible, terrible board going second, or going first on the second game, and they just they just clapped me up. There's nothing I can do against the kitties. Um, man, I hate Pearly. So, after five, five was Tier Limit. Um, tier Limit, we two ones. Uh, that one we talked about, how we, we used Colossus for the LTK, and we negated the Protoss. After that was Snake Eye Power King. I think it was two Snake Eye Fire King in a row, and it was actually Snake Eye Fire King. I don't think I played a single pure Snake Eye. Um, and it was 2-0 on the round six and 2-1 on the round seven. Uh, after that, round eight was Flu. Uh, that was the one that we went 2-1. 
thank you for the shifter and the call by situation that just like took me up to cloud nine. Absolutely love that. Um, yeah, just put up boards in games one and three that he just couldn't out. That's literally all it was. He looked at it side and just shook my hands. He was like, GG's bro. GG's. Um, and nine was the final Snake Eye cash player. <clears throat> Um, do we get into that? Uh, Snake Eye Cash Player. He was from a, a wonderful team who I will not say. And uh, he was not very happy that we ended up going to time and we took a draw. Uh, he took an 11 minute main phase two to make an IP Mascarina. And it was very clearly slow playing. And if you see this, I hope you do. I don't care if you hate me. I will take the draw. He wanted me to roll for it. I would not. So he was not very happy with me, but you know, I'm sorry. I wanted to see how far I could go on my own skill rather than leave it to a draw. So I ended up on day one, 6-2-1, and day two, uh, we played, for around 10, we played a Snake Eye Fire King, 2-0 to that in like 12 minutes. Um, I was very happy, it's, the hand just was complete gas, won the die roll, and made an unbreakable board. He couldn't stop it, and that's what we love to see in Manadium. And Round 11, last one was Voiceless Voice, branded, branded Voiceless Voice. I saw him try to break my board. He's like, I don't know if I want to break this. And he revealed the deck information when he shouldn't have. Um, and it was it was GG's from there. I knew what to side. I knew what to take out, know what to put in. He shouldn't have revealed the deck information. Shout out to him. Very cool dude. Um, but yeah, he got too old after that real fast. He broke his, broke his full Voiceless board. Forbidden Droplet is the GOAT. Hell yeah. Um, and yeah, just clapped him up. That's awesome. Uh, congratulations on getting uh, 64th place on your first YCS, brother. It was a pleasure having you alongside the trip. Uh, thanks for being an incredible mod as well. And uh, ho uh, see, uh, well, hopefully we'll see you in Indy or you know future events I'm too. I'm gonna try my best to be at Indy. And if I go, just be ready for another deck profile because it's gonna be first place. Sounds good. We like that energy. I'll be seeing you guys later. Leave a like and subscribe. Comment below what you guys thought. See you guys later.